So. <laughs> And I'll be singing a song called These Things Shall Pass, which seem kind of appropriate right now. So uh, we found it by a guy named Stuart Campbell, as the uh, uh, words and the music are by him. So we'll take a chance here and roll with it. These things shall pass, and some great morning we'll look back and smile at heartaches we have known. So don't forget when shadows gather, the Lord our God is still the God upon His throne. A rose looks gray at midnight, but the pain is just asleep. And steel is strong because it knew the hammer and white heat. These things shall pass and life be sweeter when love and faith are strong. They cannot long endure. Thank you, Gail, for sharing that with us. You're welcome. That's beautiful. Good morning, church. Good morning. I am Pastor Suzanne, Suzanne Jones, and <laughs> welcome to United Meth uh, the Benevola United Methodist Church. The words will slowly start to come out of my mouth. Uh, I want to welcome you this morning online on Facebook as well here in person. No coronavirus can keep the power of the Holy Spirit from moving in us. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, a few announcements this morning. Not many, but just a few reminders. I uh, want to ask you if you're receiving our emails each week. If you are... Wonderful. Uh, we have a bulletin available each week that you can download online and you can print a copy off for yourself to use. Uh, and if you do not receive our emails, please make sure you check out our website at benevolaumc.com and you can uh, sign up for those emails. Now we do have transcripts available of each and every service for now on. So if you know of somebody or if you would like a copy of the sermon and the service, uh, please contact the office and let us know. We'd be happy to email that to you or uh, we could also mail it to whomever you think would enjoy to receive a copy of our service. Uh, we also have an announcement about the food pantry. Uh, the food pantry is in need of some donations. Um, and would you like to speak a little bit to that for me, Miss Becky? Thank you. We've been doing the food pantry about once a month, um, the fourth Tuesday of the month, and we've had about 15 people come each time. We, um, we noticed that the, the money is being slowly going down. There's still money there, but if you would like to make a donation of money, that's fine. If you, I will send out an email about the first of the month about what who we've given to and what things we plan to give out in August. I've got quite a shopping list for July. Um, so it just staples. I mean, if you can donate some staples, we would appreciate it. You can just drop them off at the office. If you have a key, put them inside. If not, just leave them there on the porch and Terry will put them in. Thank you. very important to keep that pantry open because it is being used and glory be to God we are able to give back especially at a time like this and help serve our neighbors well with that let us now point our hearts to Christ and let us open our hearts to worship if you would take some time to pull out your bulletin if you have one with you if not that's okay just follow along uh, we will join together in our call to worship 
I see everyone pulling out their electronic devices. That's fun. This is a chance where you can be on your cell phones, right? Now, I used to be a uh, teacher, and whenever I saw my students on their cell phones or on their iPads, I'd be like, what are you doing? And one student would say, well, that's my textbook. I have my textbook online. I was like, well, hot dog. All right, go right ahead. And if they so casually went to social media, I said, if you do do that during school or during the class period, just make sure you say something nice about me so people can take the class later. But that's neither here nor there. I don't want you to be distracted. Let us call, join together in our call to worship this morning. The Lord knows each and every one of us and loves each one dearly. Sometimes it feels as though God is drifted away from us. Be strong. Look for the ways in which God is present in you. Given the trouble of the day, we often look more closely at them. Come, open your hearts and spirits to God's love and presence. Lord, help us to see your presence in all life's circumstances. Let us join in singing the first verse of To God Be the Glory. together. Patient Lord, it is so easy for us to focus on all the things that are wrong. Ease our hearts, O oh Lord. Forgive our willingness to get caught up in the negative. Direct our steps toward positive actions that will produce growth and peace. We offer this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, this morning, our scripture comes from Psalm 30, 139, verse 1 through 12 and 23 and 24. And in it, the psalmist says, You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay down your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my depth, my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there, your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. <coughs> If I say, surely the darkness will hide in me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for the darkness is as light to you. Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. If there is any offense in me, Lead me in the way that is everlasting. 
The gospel reading this morning comes from the gospel of Matthew in chapter 13. And we're continuing with Jesus in the parables. And he talks about the parables of the weeds. And Jesus told the people whom he was speaking to, he says, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. When the wheat sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds also appeared. The owner's servant came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where then did the weeds come from? He replied, the enemy did this. When the servants asked him, do you want us to go up and pull up those weeds? And he said, no, because while you are pulling the weeds, you may uproot the wheat with them. Let them both grow together until the harvest. At that time, I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles and to be burned then gather the wheat and bring it into my barn. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Would you pray with me? O oh, gracious and holy Lord, we give you thanks for the gift of the word that you have given us this day. And we thank you for the word that has become flesh and dwells in us, among us, and is with us even today. Help us to take this word and write it upon our hearts. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. The title of my sermon this morning is, What If There Were No Enemies? It almost sounds like a John Lennon song, right? The uh, Imagine, what if there was none of this or none of that? Well, all of us have perceived enemies. Would you agree? We all have them. I know growing up, I experienced my first taste of my perceived enemies, and those were my siblings. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> those of you who have siblings, you know, growing up, siblings are the perceived enemy. Um, I have three siblings. I have an older sister and two younger brothers. That's right, I am the ultimate middle child. When I was younger, my sister got on my nerves. She was older than me, so she could do what she wanted. All right, she had the cool things that I wanted. She had all the clothes that I just couldn't have, but she could have. So I would sneak into her room and, and I would borrow some things. Well, of course, she would go back in my room and she'd steal them back from me. And she would say, bleh, 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 bleh. you know how sisters can be, can nitpick at each other. Well, on the other hand, my younger brothers, well, they could get away with anything too. My younger brothers were the apple of my mother's eyes, I thought. When I had to babysit them, because I was older and I was in charge of them sometimes, I was responsible for keeping order. And well, if they acted out or if they misbehaved, all they had to do was go to mom and cry and complain and ultimately I would get the blame. It is hard being the middle child. Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> we don't get the attention. <laughs> we always get blamed. Well, <laughs> as I got gotten older and the years have gone by, we have grown closer to one another. You know, we are very fortunate. As soon as we moved out of the house, then we started to like each other. But not everybody can have that kind of a situation, and I recognize that. But for me and my siblings, we all have grown, and we all have grown close to one another, too. We have matured in our ways, kind of. Uh, I mean, we no longer have the petty arguments, but they still find a way to gang up on me during holiday gatherings just to pick on me because I'm the middle child and I cause all the problems, apparently. Anywho, thank goodness for Corona, we haven't been able to gather for a while. 
<laughs> and I don't have to suffer with them. But that's not the point. The point is, we all have perceived enemies. The biblical narrative that we have names hundreds, if not many more, uh, enemies that threaten the people called the Israelites. Now, this is where people tend to get kind of clammy whenever they come to these names in Scripture because there's so many of them, and how do you pronounce them all? Well, you get yourself a guide, and then you just say it with confidence. So I'm going to name some of the enemies that we have in the Bible that is against the uh, Israelites that are written about. You've got the Egyptians, the Amalekites, the Edomites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Syrians, the Moabites, the Ammonites, the Midianites, the Philistines, the Assyrians, the Babylonians, and the list goes on and on. And I'm sure that you could probably find even more enemies in the scripture against one another. Well, Jesus and the disciples also had to contend with their enemies too. They had Herod. They had the Pharisees, the Herodians, the chief priests, the elders, the people. Even one of the disciples turned to be an enemy. So just as the Bible calls out and gives names to certain enemies, so does our current human situation. The names of our enemies today depend on what side of the aisle you are on. If you are a sports fan, you know who your perceived enemies are. If you are a Baltimore Ravens fan, you get looks from the Steelers fans and vice versa. If you are a baseball fan and enjoy the Baltimore Orioles, you know those Yankee fans are going to come down and give you all kinds of trouble, and vice versa. But we also have labels like Democrat, Republican, liberal, conservative. They become perceived enemies. To one person, it's whoever is oppressing them. To another, it's whoever is rebelling against them. One person may see an enemy as a person who vandalizes Confederate monuments. The other person will see people who fail to understand those acts and why they're being carried out. Some is against being oppressed of the system. Some oppressed because of the people who operate the system. The enemy is whoever we perceive is threatening us and our self-interest. It's the otherness. And for many, to tell you the truth, I'm the enemy. I am a female pastor. Do you know how many people come at me thinking I'm the enemy? I'm a leader. Not many people like leadership either for women. As a matter of fact, I get a scripture thrown at me. Second Timothy, chapter 2, verse 12, comes at me quite often. And that's where Timothy says women should not be allowed in particular roles. Well, if I were going to cherry pick the scripture and take that out of context as well, I could easily respond with Matthew chapter 7, verse 1. Do not judge or ye will be judged. But I won't. Because I have been called to respond with love, not react with a cherry-picked scripture and use it as a weapon. Friends, today's parable compares the kingdom of heaven to someone who sowed seeds. But while everyone was sleeping, the enemy came along and sowed weeds against the wheat. Now that got me thinking about perceived enemies. It seems like our current human narrative has a lot of perceived enemies. And it seems like that there is a whack-a-mole game happening. You know the game where you're, you're waiting for something to pop up and you're just going to whack it with something? Well, that's sort of like what we're doing with our enemies. We're waiting for the next one to pop up so we can whack it back and down into its hole. But what if we thought less about how something or someone is an enemy and more about the good seed that is being sown in the world. What if there were no enemies? 
Now do not get me wrong, there are real threats in our world that we cannot and should not ignore. There are those things and people who work against the mission to create a kinder, more compassionate, loving place. However, my idea of peace may not look like your idea of peace. So who is right? That creates an enemy, doesn't it? Not necessarily. The biblical narrative and generations of theologians and pastors and preachers have spoken about the enemy. And the enemies that threaten kingdom living, the kingdom of God here on earth. And humans, unfortunately, are guilty of taking that information and using it as weapons against people. There are many who call Christians the enemy because of what has been done in the past. But we also must be mindful not to play the blame game or lose sight of the role that we play in any situation. We are called to hold each other accountable, but with love. Maybe I am to blame. You know, maybe there are some things that I need to grow in understanding and grow in learning. But what's most important is I am not God. Neither are you. If we were, heaven help us. We cannot cast down judgment on each other as we see fit. Yes, we have rules and regulation and we have authority, but is that the ultimate supreme authority? That is God. We all share responsibility to practice humility and actively sow good seeds that represent the kingdom. <laughs> That's our job. And I think that is why the master tells his harvesters in the field not to pull up the weeds. Who are we to judge what a weed is or is not? I mean, heck, who would have thought dandelions would be good to eat? I never knew that until I tried it. When asked if the harvester should pull up all the weeds in verse 29, the master responds, no, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let them grow together. They must grow together. I wish I knew that as a kid. You know, that might have made growing up a little bit more easier. We gotta grow up and put up with each other. I mean, pulling weeds is a pretty difficult task, amen? Has anybody pulled weeds from a garden? <laughs> yep, yeah, yeah. that's how I spent my summers in, as a child. I picked weeds out of a two and a half acre garden and it was awful. I don't know what I did to deserve that. But we also had to pick the rocks out too because heaven forbid if a rock hit daddy's garden tractor. Woo. It was not fun. But why would Jesus say, leave the weeds there? Let them grow together. Well, weeds and wheat are the same. They're plants. They all have a Latin name that some uh, a botanist has given them. Now, I'm no agricultural expert, but, you know, they are very similar in the ground. They grow the same way, and sometimes they have different characteristics. But who are we to say one is good and the other is not? I think Jesus is trying to say that it is not our job to sort out the wheat from the weeds. That's God's responsibility. Yes, we have some accountability we are to hold, but let God do the majority of the work. Maybe we don't always know the wheat from the weeds. Maybe we just need to focus rather on being the wheat, doing the best we can and mirroring God's image so that way others can see and also become wheat themselves doing justice, being kind, walking humbly with others and our Lord. Let the wheat and the weeds grow together, and maybe that's the point of the lesson. 
You know, I'm afraid that the only way humankind is going to get through 2020 is for all of us to start growing together. We should start looking less for an enemy and what's out to get us and start looking to what Jesus told us to do. When we get faced with real threats, how are we being the kingdom of God for others? Maybe if we could do a better job at loving our enemies by understanding who our enemies really are, we could begin to see fewer perceived enemies. And I took some time, but I realized that my siblings were not the enemy. I realized it was me who was the enemy. I was immature in how I handled my emotions and how I acted out in my behavior. As I got older, I became more aware of that. And that's what happens as we get older. We become aware of our behavior. Some of us are a little bit more stubborn than others. And you know, we eventually come to it. But that's not to say that there are no enemies, and that's not to give an excuse to allow people to take advantage of us or to even hurt us. But if we see fewer perceived enemies and focus the attention on us, maybe we could then see the real enemies, those enemies that lie within, those enemies called power, greed, self-interest, the ego, exclusion, inequality, self-preservation. These are the real enemies to the kingdom of God. You know, my mom used to always say, you are your own worst enemy. Man, was she right. What if we approach this week looking for fewer enemies and digging down deep and seeing why we think they are our perceived enemies? What if we stop trying to be the judge of what is wheat and what are weeds and let them grow together and let God decide that. The two lessons I want you to walk away this morning is this. Not everyone is our perceived enemy and we have to possess the tenacity, the tenacity to stay with something that doesn't come easy to, with us. Not many of us can do that interior work. Loving our enemies is not easy. It's easy to say, but harder to do. Understanding is not always our first response, but we as Christians, if we're going to say we believe in the radical, inclusive love of God that has redemptive power, if we truly believe that, then y'all, we need to act like it. We must have the tenacity to let go of our need to focus on the weeds and start loving our true enemies. Can we do that this week? Can we practice that? Maybe dig a little deeper. And if you need to pull out some aggression, go out to the garden and pull some real weeds out, okay? May it be so. Amen. Well, this morning, let us come to a time of lifting our prayers and concerns for one another. Uh, we certainly want to continue to be in prayer for those who are on our list. Uh, and if you have any prayer concerns that you would like to include on our prayer list that we send out weekly, uh, please send them to the office. We'd be happy to pray for you, uh, as well as whomever that you would love to lift up. Uh, so this morning, what can we lift up for the glory or for the uh, concern of others? We certainly want to keep the Fasulo family in prayer for the passing of Mike Fasulo, uh, who was close to many. Um, we want to pray for that family. Sue? Oh, my friend Debbie Wetzel.
church. His daughter, we were praying for for a while because she was battling cancer, and that cancer is back. So he he asked for prayers for his daughter Whitney. Whitney. So we had a joyful prayer this week. Dave turned nine. Yay! 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 Happy birthday, bud. We had a joy also. Tim has decided to bring Daddy home. And so Tim, Daddy is living with Tim now. So prayers for Tim and Mom and Dad are not together. And I know that that concerns Daddy, but he's not at Summerford anymore. Okay. Continue prayers for that in the transition. That's good news, though. We had a joy also yesterday when uh, we've had a little celebration for Nelson and Judy. Yes. Congratulations on your on your marriage and uh, many blessings for the years to come. Thank you. Uh, we also have a blessing. The confirmation class will be getting together and we will be con commencing. And hopefully we will be able to celebrate confirmands at the end of August. So we'll keep you posted on that. So please continue to keep our three confirmation uh, confirmands in prayer, as well as their mentors and the leaders of the group. Uh, we really appreciate those who are working with that and uh, uh, continue to pray for our, our young people. Yes. Who are our confirmands? I knew you were going to ask that. <laughs> this is my third week. So uh, we've, got, we've got Zach Stanfield, right? Okay, Zach Stanfield. We've got a baker, a boy. Matt, 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 Matt Baker. Okay, got Matt Baker. I'm getting the names. I'm getting the names. And Matt, no. Brett Sharpless. I am sorry I don't have them in my head concreted. I just learned them this week. So <laughs> uh, I'm very, very excited to get to know these young men and to work with them. So we will certainly have a celebration towards the end of the month. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. We need the rain and we want to keep those who are less fortunate in our prayers, those who are in need. Well, let us go to God in prayer. God of love, you are a God of all of us. And you want the best for each and every one of us. We have a lot to learn this morning, Lord. And we know that life is not always easy. And it's hard not to be understanding and show love as we encounter difficult times. Lord, we ask you to make us wise. Help us to learn about courage and perseverance how to have hope, and how to offer forgiveness to, Lord, in these times. This morning, Lord, we have lifted up names and situations that lay on our hearts. We lifted up groups of people who are in need of your comfort, but also we've lifted up celebrations and how your blessings are working in this congregation. Lord, you are the God of all of us. There are other prayers, Lord, that we hold on our hearts that we have not named. And we lift them to you now in this moment of silence. You know our hearts, Lord, and you have heard the cries of your children. You see our tears, you feel our pain, you experience our joy. Be with all of us, Lord. We pray these things in the name of Jesus, who taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and glory forever. Well, now is the time for our offering. If you have yet to do so, we have our offering plate here in the middle of our uh, sanctuary. Um, as well as for those who are online, you can easily give online electronically uh, uh, by visiting our webpage and downloading a little app to, to the, I guess it's a Banco app. Uh, but with that, just know that your offering does go a long way. It has been able to help countless of people and to continue to keep the ministries going here at Benovola. Um, it is certainly a joy to be able to give generously because God gives generously to us. So it's our responsibility to continue the flow and to keep going and give God's love to each other and one another. And with that, we also have different ways to give too. Giving with not only our tithes, but with our gifts. Uh, you can give by serving, uh, by mowing the grass or cutting down trees. <laughs> you can serve by cleaning up something or helping taking somebody to an appointment. You can serve by wearing a mask in front of people at grocery stores and around when you interact with each other. But you can also serve by lifting up the gift of music. And that's what we have this morning. So I will pass it along to, to Gail and Rowan. So this song's been a while around for a while, and right in these times, I think, uh, it's especially for myself, with what seems to be such a, a chaotic time, it's easy to forget that we don't really have a whole lot of control of a lot of things, but there is someone who is ultimately in control. And so this song, though, it's an older song, I think it has a good message. into our lives. 
Help these gifts to bring hope and love to all of those in need. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us sing together our closing hymn this morning, Standing on the Promises of God. And we'll sing verse 1 and verse 2. together in unity and love so that we can bring the kingdom of God here on earth. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, go in peace.